Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to another divine service. So I will ask you to please stand as Brother Stevan will open with prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking up us this morning for another, for another service, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for every other day that is coming forth, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for guidance. We thank you for food. We thank you for shelter. Continue guide us with your mercy, dear Lord, in your son's name. Amen. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after thee. You alone are my heart's desire.
Happy Sabbath, saints of God. How are you feeling today? If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, say praise the Lord. Indeed, God has been good to us throughout this week. What do you say? Amen. He woke us up this morning, clothed us in our rightful mind. Take us here to worship him. And I'm saying to you today, beloved, you didn't come here because of mere curiosity. You didn't come here by chance. You come here because the Holy Spirit would have brought you here. It means that God have a purpose for you today. And I trust that you will endeavor to fulfill that purpose that God have for you. I welcome my visitors. I welcome my members who are here. I welcome those of you who are online. I'm saying that you have done the right thing in tuning to Bath Seventh-day Adventist Church today. So whether you are watching live or you will see this broadcast delayed, 
we welcome you and we trust that you will receive the blessings that is in store for all of you. What do you say? Amen, amen. I just want to recognize some special persons who are in our midst today. I first want to recognize the Webster family. They became a family with us last week through watery baptism. Amen? Amen. Just raise your hand where you are, the Webster family, so that we can acknowledge you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my brother. We welcome you. Special welcome to Brianna Miller from Miller's Avenue. Amen. Also, special welcome to our visitor, Deborah Shakes from Mandeville SDA. Amen. Amen. Also, Brother Ricardo Hudson, he was baptized in our crusade, and we are happy to have him here um, worshiping with us today, Brother Hudson. Please continue to come. We missed you, and I trust that you will continue to be a part of this family, your family. We love you, and we welcome you here. Perhaps I may have missed some visitors. You might come in through one of the side doors, and we miss um, your name. We want to welcome you to our congregation, welcome you to Bath, and I trust that you will have the spiritual Bath in our midst today. Invite the singers, the praise team to come as we will sing our welcome song. Everybody please stand and join us. And the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I like that thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. And it's so nice to see those happy faces. Praising God in the heavenly place. I like that thrill that I feel when I get together with God. Remain standing for the call to worship. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father. God and our Heavenly Father. Today, Lord, we are indeed grateful and privileged and blessed to be in your midst. We have found ourselves 
in the best place at the right time. To be in your midst, Lord, is comfort and joy. It was David who said, I was glad when they say unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Today, Lord, we can rejoice in salvation full and free. Your people have come today from near and far. We have come, Lord, in unity and in one accord and is to worship you. So even now, Heavenly Father, help us as your people to put everything that is unlike you, to empty self of self and to focus on you and to turn our cups up to receive the blessing. So even now, Lord, as your people worship you, sweeten our presence now, Lord, with your, sweeten our worship with your presence. May heaven come down. May glory fill this place. When we should have live here today, may all of us can rejoice in salvation full and free is our prayer and asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of praise, 538, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, 538, and we will sing to the honor and glory of God. What do you say? Amen. <laughs> Shall we praise the Lord. Lord, church? You may be seated. You know, as I look back at this, this song, the song of meditation, I like the last two lines. Last three lines, it says, songs of praises, songs of praises I will ever give to thee. I trust, beloved, that this will be our prayer to always give songs of praises to the most high God. Because from the rising of the sun to the setting thereof, God deserves all our praise. Do you believe that? If you believe that, say amen. 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 Speaking about praise, yes, we will continue our songs of praise as Sister Ethel Golob will now give us a special song. Happy Sabbath, church. Mm. 
One day I came to him. I was so thirsty. I asked for water. My throat was so dry. He gave me water that I never dreamed of. And in this water, he bring back to me. He said, I thirst, yet he made the river. He says, I'm thirst, yet he makes the sea. He says, I'm thirst, and the king of all ages. And in this great thirst, he brought waters to me. Now there's a river that flows as clear as crystal. And it comes from God's throne of above. And like a river, it wells up inside me, bringing mercy and life-giving love. He says, I'm thirst, yet he makes the river. He says, I'm thirst, yet he makes the sea. I thirst, the king of all ages, and in this water, he brings out to my soul. Yes, I'm thirst that he makes the river. He says I'm thirst yet he makes the sea. I thirst, serve the king of all ages. And in this thirst, he brings water to me. Clear, clear water. Good morning, everyone. The topic I'll be talking on this morning is anger. What's the topic? Now at some point in time, each one of us have been vexed or we get anger, right? Isn't that so? Anyone here who hasn't get, have never been angry? No. Now when you're angry, it can pose a lot of problems. What are some of the problems that anger can cause? High blood pressure, what else? Heart attack, what else? Sweet disorder, I don't know that one. Somebody will have to explain. <laughs> okay. Or <Well>, yes. <laughs> Stress. Anything else? And what does the Bible say? You know the text that says that you're not supposed to let the sun go down on your wrath. Why that should not happen? Why do you believe that you, you, you should not let something like that happen? If you die in your sleep, what will happen? Yes, you look because if you if if you don't ask the person for forgiveness and you die in your sleep, you know what happened. I'll share a short story to you. There was a couple that were living together. They were, mar they were married. And the wife came in and saw the husband texting on his phone. Now, she decided that she wanted to know who the husband was texting. And the husband decided that he was not telling her. Now, for the whole evening, she was there pestering him, nagging him over the dinner, 
bedtime. Can you imagine bedtime? The same thing kept happening. And the husband got vexed and he came out the room. He waited until his wife was sleeping. He came back. Now approximately 10 o'clock, the wife have her hand and was hitting him like this. He got mad, came out of the room, went in another room, and spent the night there. He got up, fixed his breakfast, went to work, came back from work, and noticed that the, the wife was still in the bed sleeping. Now, he went and checked. She was dead. She had an asthma attack. And because he thought that it was the same thing, she was pissed him about. She, she could not speak. She was hitting him to tell him that he wanted his, her inhaler. But he just thought that it was the, the argument early on. And so he lost his wife. And they said that it was a true story. You know. He lost his wife. So, sometimes <laughs> we just don't even know what will happen sometimes because of our anger. And we have to know how to control it. Likewise, although it's hard to control, but we have to ask the Lord to help us to monitor it. Amen. <laughs> we'll continue next week on methods how to prevent, how to cope with anger. So thank you very much. Next week, all being well. Okay, my name is Sister Green. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath, bigger boys and girls. Okay, my little boys and girls here, be quiet, please. Please be quiet and listen, because after hearing the story, I'm going to ask you some questions. So if you are not quiet, then you won't hear, right? The topic of your story this morning is Sarah and the sprinklers. What do we call a sprinkler? Anybody have an idea? Hmm? Yes, yeah, something like a hose. Sprays in the garden. Yes, yeah, something that sprays in the garden. Very good. Okay. And what is the name of the little girl here? Sarah. No, it was two sisters. It was Sarah and Tracy. Sarah was all dressed up to go to the birthday party. In fact, her mother had just finished putting on her very pretty white dress and tying her neatly combed hair with blue ribbons. Now I'll start on Tracy, said mom. So Sarah was ready and mom was about to get Tracy dressed. So she said to Sarah, so you be good now, Sarah, until Tracy's ready. And don't do anything to make yourself dirty. No, mommy, said Sarah. I'll be very good. I'll just walk around the garden and smell the flowers. Will that be all right? Now here, Sarah is making a promise to mom. She's saying she'll be good. She won't dirty her dress until her sister is ready. 
Yes, said her mother, but do keep clean until it's time for the party. While mom started on Tracy, changing her dress and combing her hair, little Sarah walked around the garden, just smelling the flowers as she had promised. But something happened. We all know that in summer, the time feels very hot, don't it? Yes, man, you feel hot. And as Sarah waited for her big sister to get ready for the party, she felt herself getting hotter and hotter because she was there walking around in the garden, you know, smelling the flowers. After a while, she noticed that her neighbors had their sprinkler on, and it was there working, showing up the clouds of fine sprinkles on the flowers. It looked so lovely. And she was feeling so hot. She walked over and put out the fire. Now she wanted to feel a little cooler. How cool the water was. Some of it splashed on her cheeks, and she thought it was wonderful. So guess what? She started going a little closer to the water. And closer and closer. Now soon, the water was sprinkling on her head and trickling down her hair. No, Sarah didn't remember anything about party anymore because she was hot, so she wanted to become cool. Finally, Sarah said to herself, I am going to lay down on my back and let this sprinkler skirt all over me. Now, let me show you. Let me give you a picture of Sarah here. Here is Sarah. What is she doing? Yes, she's, she put her hands up trying to protect her head and feet. Right? Water was sprinkling on her. So she went on her back, and there she was. The water was squirting all over her. She didn't remember anything about that pretty white dress she had on because she was hot. All of a sudden, mother came out of the house. Sarah, all Tracy was not ready for the party. Sarah, she called. It's time for the party. Tracy is ready. But there was no Sarah. Sarah, where are you? Her mother's voice started to get worried. But still, there was no Sarah. And just then, mother looked across the lawn. Guess who did she see? Sarah, Sarah laying on her back, feeling so comfortable and cool. Sarah, where are you? Then she looked across the neighbor's lawn. What a sight. There was Sarah lying on the grass. Didn't remember her pretty white dress that she had on, you know. She was happily letting the water spray all over her. Her pretty hair, her dress was what? Ruined. And her neatly combed hair became so wet, it was soggy. Sarah shouted, Mother. What on earth are you doing? What are you doing, Sarah? Mother didn't wait for her to answer. She just went over and grabbed her and carried her inside, dripping wet. Now, what happened next? I'll leave you to guess. But the story said, Tracy went to the party all by herself. And Sarah was punished. And her punishment was to sit in the kitchen, sit on a chair in the kitchen, until Sarah returned from the party. Sorry, until Tracy, thank you, until Tracy returned from the party. No. Somebody, I want someone to tell me something. promise and the next thing is to be obedient to a 
adults, whether you're parents or your guardian. Okay? Who want to pray for us now? Dear Jesus, I come in the morning life. I love you so much. Make me do the right things for you. And make God help you. Jesus, help me do the right things. God, thank you for making me baptized. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Deacons and deaconesses come forward to receive tithes and offerings. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. God has left us in charge of his good in his deacons proceed to receive tithes and offerings. God has left us in charge of his goods in his absence. Each steward has his own special work to do for the advancement of God's kingdom. None is excused. The Lord bids us all. Occupy till I come.
scripture reading will be taken from Mark 12, verses 41 to 44. And Jesus sat over against the treasure and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and the many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she trust in two might, which make a far thing. And he called unto his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast much in, than all they which have cast into the treasure. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her went, went did cast in all that she had even all her living. Our God and our Father, this morning it affords us a great privilege to be in your presence, knowing that in your presence there is fullness of joy. And as we come this morning to worship you, Lord, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to thank you, O God, for forgiving us of our sins which we had have committed during this week, the sins that we know of and the one that we know not of. And as you extended mercy towards us, Lord, we here come in gratitude, dear Lord, giving you thanks for saving our lives. We did not deserve to be here this morning, but because you have paid it all on Calvary, all to you, Lord, we have owed this morning. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for saving grace. We thank you, oh God, that you have placed in your heart, dear Lord, a man to give us the message of the hour. And he's one of our elders. We may look up, up, upon him as simple. But Lord, today I know that you have given him a message with power and clarity. And as he delivers your message today, O oh God, we may not see him, but we may see you through him. And for what is concerned us, may we take it. I pray, O oh God, for the visitors who are here today. And as they come, dear Lord, may they not come just because they want to come to church. But I pray that the spirit of the living God may fall afresh upon them. And they too may say it was good for us to be here. Continue to lead and direct our steps now we pray. In Jesus name, amen.
it is now time for us to hear a message from God. Today we celebrate Stewardship Day. So it means you will be hearing your first Stewardship message for the year 2024. It is also deliberate on our calendar that every quarter there is a Stewardship Day. So it means that we will have at least four Stewardship Day for the year. There are some quarter you will even find two Stewardship Day. I believe that Stewardship is the only department that is assigned a day every quarter. It means, therefore, that God is very deliberate for us as stewards to be faithful. So, if there's no other message that is emphasized in our churches, stewardship emphasis is a message that you will hear every quarter. So it means then as, as stewards, as people of God, we are encouraged to be faithful. Today, our stewardship coordinator, Elder Vivian Leslie, has availed himself to be used by God to encourage stewardship. I trust that as Elder come, you breathe a prayer in your heart, and as the message go forth, we will encourage to be better stewards. Before Elder come, a song of meditation. Happy Sabbath, church. Oh, what a love my God has given me. He gave a love with an endless guarantee. What good have I done for God has sent his son who bled and died to save a wretch like me on Calvary in agony with him I want to be and oh Lord I'm falling in love I've got to be dreaming about a love like this. And if I really dreaming, well, I want to dream the rest of my life. I've got to be dreaming about a love like this. And if I really dreaming, well, I want to be the rest of my life. Been in sin, my soul has been a slave. God sent his son and their sinful soul to save. Eternal life to me he has given, and I'm being prepared to live with him in heaven. He bore my shame. I want to wear his name. He took my sins away. And I've gone, all gone, all gone. I've got to be dreaming about a love like this. And if I really dreaming, well, I want to dream the rest of my life. Oh, I got to be dreaming about a love like this. And if I really dreaming, well, I want to dream the rest of my life. I can't sing crazy. I've got to be dreaming about a love like this. And if I really dreaming, well, I want to dream the rest of my life. Oh, I got to be dreaming about a love like this. And if I really dreaming, well, I want.
want to dream the rest of my life. Amen. I can tell you one thing. Wake up. Because it's now worship time. I want no sleeping inside here. And we do usually dream when we are asleep. All right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Are you happy to be alive? Yeah, we ought to be. Because God has been good to us. Amen. Uh, despite our nothingness. Despite our waywardness, God has been good. Amen? Oh, it does sound like uh, you, didn't, you, you didn't taste of God's goodness this week. I have tasted of God's goodness. And like the song says, his goodness keeps running after me. And I can celebrate life today all because he loves me. Amen. So when we are in church today, it's all about worship. Amen? Amen? It's all about worship. Worship to God Almighty because he deserves it. Amen? Amen? He deserves it. I want you to be happy about God. I want you to be happy about the opportunity you have to worship God. Because I tell you, the busyness of this life deprives us sometimes of the good times we should have been having with God. Yes? And we are happy that God looking down through time saw that it would have been so. So he set aside today his holy Sabbath. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And he has called us to be in his courts today to worship him. And I'm happy for every worshiper. I'm also happy for those who are joining us online. As I always say, you have choices. There's so many other places you could have been, so many other uh, links you could have uh, signed on to. But we are happy that you have joined with us to worship with us today. I hope you will not be disappointed. I just know that the Lord has blessing in store for you. Amen? Today, Today's topic is one that is in keeping with uh, stewardship. And you know that a steward is one who is entrusted with uh, someone's goods or property. In this case, we, God has entrusted us with things that we are to take care of. And when I say things, I'm included ourselves. Amen? That we ought to take care of. And the fact of the matter is that someday soon, every steward will have to give an account to God. Did you hear me? Every one of us will have to give an account to God as to how we have uh, been stewards, as to how we would have taken care of the things that he has entrusted in our care. And today, I am sure that we will allow God's spirit to lead us so that we will take better care. And none of us can claim that we have been on par. We have been doing the right things all the time. But today, we have an opportunity to ask God to help us so that we will do better as we take care of the goods he has entrusted to us. And so I invite you to pray as with me as we look on the topic, uh, take my silver, but what of my gold? What did I say? Right, take my silver, what about the gold? Yeah, take my silver, but what? about the goal. Let us pray. Father in heaven, today we have been given another opportunity 
to come into your courts. We invite now your Holy Spirit, Lord, to do a work on every heart. Remove every doubt, remove every fear, remove every biases, everything that is unlike you. Take it now, Lord, and replace it with your love, grace, and mercy. Be with your manservant now as I open your words. I pray that your Holy Spirit will bring meaning to these words to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Take my silver, but what about my gold? You know, I've been thinking about the views that many critics uh, put forward as they look at us Christians. When you go there, you hear many people say many things about Christians. And one of the first things that comes to mind is they tell you that they are one of the biggest hypocrites. Am I right? Do, don't you hear that out there? Uh, yes, man. They say that Christians are hypocrites. Yeah. They say that we are some of the greatest liars. I'm just telling you what people say, right? <laughs> They tell you that we say one thing with our lips, but we do something else. Don't you hear that? Talk to me, man. Yes, man, you hear it. But let's face it. The man who calls himself a Christian today, he would have broken at some time or another God's commands. Isn't that so? So, more or less, those who criticize Christians are sometimes true. You don't want to say yes. Yes, they are true. And if we are to take an introspective look, we can say, yes, we have slipped up along the way. Amen? Yeah, that's why we are here today. We seek pardon and grace. Yes. So... To, to straighten the point, there are some songs that we sing, and I'm going to bring a few of them to you uh, to show you how we would have fallen along the way. And so the Christian sings the song, Lord, I care not for riches, neither silver or gold. Don't we sing it? Do we mean it? <laughs> That's a lie, eh? Yes, man. We, we're taking a deep look today. Lord, I care not for... It's in our hymnal, right? One of our old hymn, songs in the hymnal. Lord, I care not for riches, neither silver or gold. Look at the words. I am not here sitting in judgment. I am just allowing ourselves, including myself, to examine ourselves. Lord, I care not for riches, neither silver or gold. Now, we just have to look around us. And we can see what we care about hmm? by the way we live. We are concerned many times about our appearance. So we go for the hottest clothes around. Hmm? The hottest shoes around. The hottest cars. The hottest bike. For some people, Christianity is placed on standby while they have a good time. Hmm? Yes. And some put Christianity on hold while they try to accumulate wealth, money at any cost. 
We have seen it around. We have seen it. Some, even uh, people who are ardent churchgoers, they'll tell you that they have to work money because money answered everything. But I'll hasten to say, not at the expense of your soul salvation. Not at the expense of uplifting Christ and his word. Some people, they'll take a job that demands them to work on the Sabbath. And they'll work. And they will still visit church. You notice my word. I choose my word very carefully. Visit church. Not condemning anyone. But remember the song we sing. Lord, I care not for riches, neither silver or gold. So, Virgin, we cannot put our Christianity on standby to earn money or to make a living. That can't be right with God. The Lord reminds us that the earth is the Lord's and what? And the fullness thereof. The cattle upon a thousand hills belong to him. And if he wants to give you a nice bull calf, ask him. Amen? If he wants to give you a nice goat kid, ask him. They belong to him. What do you say? Yes, the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. I'm saying that Christians must live a Christ-like life. We must be led by the Spirit. Anything you want, Daddy Jesus can give it to you. Amen? Anything you want or that you are in need of, I'll put it proper. Anything you are in need of, he says he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory, and I know I have a rich daddy. Amen? I have a rich daddy. I have a rich daddy. Apart from that, as Christians, we must be honest in our dealings, in our business. Amen? Remember I said we are stewards. We must be honest, we must be truthful, we must be fair in business. L let us hear what Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says. Luke 6 and verse 38. It says, Okay, I'm at Luke 8. Luke 6 and verse 38. Give and it shall be what? Given unto you. Good what? Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. And what? Oh, let, let's go back at that. What we are to give, we are not to give what we don't want. Yeah? We must give the best. And those of us who are in business, you are sell, buying and selling, give the right amount. Make sure that your scale is always on the zero. It should not be advanced. Am I speaking to Christians today? Amen? It, is, it, it would be better if your if you scale gone back a little. So at least when you, when you give, the, you give oh, extra. Amen? But it should not be forward. We must give what? Good measure, shaken, shake it, make it settle. So those who do higgling, uh, you sell peas by the quart, or whatever you sell by the quart. When you fill the quart pan, quart can, you know what I'm, old timers, you know what I'm talking about. Ram it, man, ram it, make it shake down. Good measure, press down, shaken together, and what? Running over. Hmm? You think you'd be worse off? You cannot be. You cannot be. Shall men give, 
into your bosom for with the same measure that he meet with all. So the same measure that you give out is the same way you're going to get. Amen? Amen. That's God's words. We must be good in, in, in business. Let's also look what Micah 6 and verse 8 says. As Christians, what the Lord expects of us. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord, what? Require of thee. We must be what? Just. Amen, church? We must do what? Justly. I'm at uh, Micah uh, 6 and verse 8. We must be just in our dealings. We must be merciful. And after you have been all of that, he says you must walk humbly with your God. I'm sure some of you don't find it yet, but let me read it again. He had showed thee, O oh man, what is what? What is good? And what does the Lord do what? Require. That's what the Lord is, is wanting us to do. Yeah? We must be what? Just. We must do justly. We must love mercy. And we must walk humbly with our God. Amen. Is that asking too much? Oh no, it is not. It is not. So let me look at another, I would call it lie number two. We sing the song, All to Jesus. <laughs> All to Jesus, I surrender. Hmm? All to thee, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence. Where is his presence? Eh? In his presence, there is fullness of joy. So those who, those who lay back to the end say, me too tired, me can't come to church. Me stay home and sleep and watch online. Hmm? All to Jesus, I surrender. Surrender your tiredness to him too. He can refresh you. Amen, church? Amen. So the big question is, do we really and freely give everything to him? They are bridging some baggages and burdens that we need to let go of. We need to lay them at Jesus' feet. Surrender them. I'm talking about some of them bridging in our blood, you know. Because we are sinful, ain't it? Some of them are in our DNA. Some of them we inherited from our parents. Are we together? But we need to surrender them to God. Amen? Yes. I'm talking about bad habits. We have some bad habits in our brethren. And we live with it that it becomes so normal. But they are bad habits. We need to surrender them to God. Amen, church? Some of us have some worldly friends. And some Christians will tell you that some of them best friends are worldly. And, you know, and then some of them talk with it with pride. Huh? But brethren, can two walk together unless they agree? We must, we must make sure that the things we do, that it things that will enhance our Christian life. Amen? Our Christian experience. And so as the song says, worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus. Take me now. Amen? We are to give up and let go of the things that are worldly and things that are of God. Those are the things we are to stick to. Lie number three. Take the world, but give me Jesus. Hmm? Lie, not true. Let's look in ourselves, brethren. One thing is certain. You can't serve two masters. We cannot serve God and mammon. And so when I truly examine worldliness, I conclude that in all of us, there's a little of it. 
Hmm? You better, you better admit it. In every one of us, there's a little worldliness. Some more than others. The worldliness in all in us is all tied up in customs. Are we, to, are we together? It's all tied up in passions and styles. Amen? We can't escape it. It's all in us. It's all in our programs, even church programs, and in our activities. So if we are not careful, if we are not careful, when we plan and in initiate some of our programs, we will find a little worldliness in it. But as Christians, as people of God, we must be the trendsetters. What do you say? We must be the trendsetters. Let us surrender all to Jesus. Amen, church? So when we sing this song, All to Jesus, I surrender, we must do so with a heart that is open to be willing to let go of things that are seemingly important to us, but they go contrary to what the Lord requires of us. And so the songwriter says in hymn number 185, the second standard, Jesus is all the world to me. Amen? Jesus should be all the world to me. My friend in trial sore, I go to him for blessings, and he gives them over and over to me. Amen? He sends the sunshine and the rain. Is that a blessing? Is that a blessing? He sends the harvest, golden rain, sunshine and rain, harvest of grain. He is my friend. So, brethren and friends, don't seek after worldliness. Don't seek after worldly friend. Jesus must be all the world to us. What do you say? Amen. Amen. And so, after telling all these lies and more, we then sing. It is well with my soul. <laughs> it is well with my soul. Mm. The question is, is it really well? If you are not willing to give up worldliness, if you are not willing to surrender all to the Lord, can it be well with your soul? No. No. My recommendation is take everything to Jesus. Amen, church? Everything. Turn over everything to him. Turn over everything to him. So, let's look at the second stanza of the song, It Is Well With My Soul. It says, My sin, oh the joy of this glorious thought, my sin, listen now, my sin, not in what? Not in part, but what? The whole. So sometimes we pray about some things, you know, and we hold back some because we're not ready to give it up yet. This is why the songwriter is saying, don't hold back. Give everything to Jesus. Amen, church? Don't hold back on any sin because that very one that you're holding on to, that you plan to commit, Tonight or tomorrow might be the very one that will take you to your grave. Oh, and then, and then, and then, where will you spend eternity? So we have to think about that. My sin, not in part, but the whole. They are what? Nailed to the cross, and I bear them no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. So after you would have surrendered all to Jesus, then we can say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My sins are nailed to the cross. Amen. So, having examined myself, I can now sing the song, Chief of Sinner. Amen, church? Chief of Sinner. Though I be, Christ is all in all to me. So I now acknowledge my true state. 
I realize that I need help. So I say, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. You know that song? Hmm? We know that song. Let me look at the words. That song is number 330, I think. All right. All right, L let's examine that song. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Look at the things we are going to look at now. Take my hands. Yeah? Let them move. Take my feet. Let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice. Because all of these, all of these members, you know, sometimes, they, sometimes our feet go places we're not supposed to go. Isn't that right? There's a saying that fools go are trod where fools go where angels fear to trod. Hmm? Take my lips. Oh, this one James tells us that the tongue is an unruly member. And when I talk about lips here, I'm talking about the tongue, you know. Mm -hmm. Take my lips. Let them be filled with messages for thee. So instead of gossiping and carrying news and and crucifying your brother and sister with others. Yeah? You use your lips to echo praise. And thanksgiving. And speak well of others. Don't crucify each other. Mm. Take my silver. But my goal. My holy close to myself. God that valuable. But I'm saying to us. Lord. Take my silver and my, and my gold. Not a might would I withhold. So I'm not going to keep anything back from God. Take my will. Let it be no longer mine. And you know, when we pray, brethren, let us ask God to let his will be done in us. Because... Sometimes we have some ideas and some plans what we want for ourselves. You know, in God's plans. So we ask God to make his will be made known to us and let it be manifested in us. So we say, take my will and make it thine. Let it be no longer mine. Then we say, Lord, take my heart. Hmm? Because out of our hearts comes the issues. Eh? Take my heart, let it be your royal throne. And if the Lord is in our heart, brethren, if we surrender all to him and enthrone him in our heart, then we'll walk and talk like a Christian. What do you say? Amen. Amen. We will walk and talk like a Christian. And the last stanza of the song says, Take my love, my Lord I pour. At thy feet its treasure store. Take myself. And I will be ever only all for thee. I'm surrendering my all to you Lord. I'm surrendering my all to you. But notice. All I have just mentioned. They have to do with our bodies. Hmm? Or you know different members of our body. So have I given everything to God? Hmm? I also mention about our silver and our gold. Those are things. What have we been doing with the many blessings God has given us? Are you blessed? Only a few. I am blessed. Are you blessed? I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. The fact that you're here and you're listening, you're hearing, some people can't hear. And because you're hearing me, you respond to me. That's a blessing. 
That's a blessing. Some are dumb. They may want to talk to express themselves, but they can't. Yeah? We are able to talk. That's a blessing. Yes, it is. We, I tell you, brethren, we, we overlook these things and call them simple. But they are blessings. What do you say? Yeah. The song says, I am blessed. Every day of my life, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning and when I lay down to rest, I am blessed. Another song says, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will what? Surprise you what the Lord has done. He didn't have to do it, you know. But he loved us, so he did it. Amen? Amen. So, the things God has blessed us with. If I were not able to uh, pay my mortgage last month, follow me. If I were not able to pay my mortgage last month, and hence it attracted some penalties and interest, hmm? and that's, that compounds it, you know, it makes it worse. Does that mean that God has taken back his blessings from me? Hmm? No. When my son or daughter, who was my only means of support, loses his or her job, can I identify any blessings there? <laughs> You're very slow to answer that one, eh? Hmm? Hmm? My daughter or son is the one who sends um, um, money every month for me to survive. But they suddenly lost their job. Eh? Oh, so once there's life, there's hope. That's the voice of the Christian. Amen. 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 Now, Job 1 verse 21. Let's turn. Job 1 verse 21. And Job, Job understood what it is like to suffer. But he concludes. He says, naked I came. Out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave. Let's say that again. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the attitude of a Christian. Less complaining, less murmuring. The Lord give it, and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so this helps us to understand that despite the many things God has given us, he in his wisdom, he in what? His wisdom has the right to withheld, to withhold such things from us because he knows the beginning from the end. Amen? Amen. Amen. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord. And I believe that my blessing is as big as my faith. Hmm? Yeah? My blessings are as big as my faith. So when you pray believing, your faith will, will, will the, the, the result of what you get is a measure of your faith. Amen? Yes, the measure of faith that you have will be shown in what? You receive from God. Now Proverbs 3 and ver verses 9 and 10. Is, is, is a text that we, we repeat. Uh, very very often. Proverbs 3 verses 9 and 10. It says. Uh, Honor the Lord with what? With your substance. And with the first fruit of all thine increase, so shall thy bonds be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. You know what the two verses are saying? They are saying simply, honor the Lord 
with what he has blessed you with. Give back to God what belongs to him. So that, uh, as a result of doing that, it says, the Lord will bless your barns, yeah? So that they will be filled, and your press will what? Burst at the seams. Hmm? So you be faithful to God and watch God bless you. That's what it is saying. Honor the Lord with your substance. So what are your substances? Malachi 3 and verse 10. I think that's where you'll find, it helps us to understand what your substances are. Malachi 3 and verse 10. He says, bring ye all the tithes into the what? The storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now here with said the Lord. Not very many times the Lord said, if put him to test, you know. But with this, the Lord said, test me. Just come test me. You ever tell anybody to test you yet? Sometimes when you know you're standing up on firm footing, you know, you say, test me. Because you know you're on firm footing. Eh? The Lord says, um, prove me, says the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so that there will not be room enough to receive it. What we just read over there that your presses are at, burst out with new wine and your bonds will be filled. And Malachi is saying that it will give you so much blessing that you don't have place to put it. Whoa. Hey, that's blessings, you know. That's blessing. Do you want that blessing? I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. So then, the Lord is asking us to be faithful to him with what he has blessed us with. He asks us to give back to him um, one-tenth of our earnings, of your increase. One-tenth. That means, that means, simply put, and uh, as towards the treasury and the stewardship de department, we always try to highlight these things and educate the church. That means if I work $100 this week, I give back as tithe, how much? $10. If I work $100,000, I give back as tithe, what? $10,000, yeah? If I work 1000 I give back how much? 100 right? It's like that. If I work 15000 I give back how much? 1,500, right? Simply. And then you give a liberal offering from out of the portion that you have. Yeah? No. I am saying to us, we must move from the tradition of giving to God the little change. You get what I'm saying? Move away from giving to God the little change. God deserves more than the little change. Are we together? It was he who gave it to us. And he says, give me back a part of it. And you just have to take up the little change and give God. Not good enough. So, You, you went shopping, hmm? and you get back the little change. And that is what you took to church to chew in the offering receptacle. The little change, giving to God. I don't, just look at it, just look at it. We can't treat God like that. We cannot. So, I'm going back to the topic. What was the topic of the sermon? Take my silver, but what of my gold? So here now, the silver is like the little change. But the gold, I keep back because my demands are many. Hello, let me tell you something, Bridget. We need to trust God, you know. Amen, church. Trust God, have faith in God, and watch him work. Trust God, have faith in him, and watch him work. God will not let us down. I am sure about that. But we let him down. 
Hmm? We let him down. Take my silver and my gold, the song says, not a mite, not a dime will I withhold. Not a dime will I withhold. God's stewards will be faithful to God. Amen? And faithful to God in all things. Faithful to him in time, in talent, in our treasure, and how we take care of our body. All of us have erred along the path. So when I'm here talking, don't believe that I am holier than thou. I just want to encourage all of us to be faithful to God. Amen? Amen. We are at the beginning of another year. And isn't it a good time to say, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Amen? I have found out that business robs us of valuable time. Business. Business can cause us not to take proper care of our bodies. So business has eaten away from our spiritual lives. I'm going to read you something I got some years ago. I was very happy when I bumped on it uh, recently. It says that Satan had a meeting. And Satan called a worldwide convention of demons. In his opening address, Satan said, We can't keep Christians from going to church. We can't keep them from reading their Bibles and knowing the truth. We can't even keep them from forming an intimate relationship with their Savior. Once they gain that connection with Jesus, our power over them is broken. That's what Satan is admitting. So let them go to their churches. Yeah? But steal their time. So they don't have time to develop a relationship with their Lord. So Satan said to the demons, this is what I want you to do. Distract them. Distract them from gaining hold of their Savior and maintaining that vital connection throughout the day. Then they say, how shall we do this? Satan said to them, keep them busy. Hmm? Keep them what? Keep them busy in the non-essentials of life and invent innumerable schemes to occupy their minds. And when I read this, I say, Lord, have mercy, the phone. Huh? One of them, it good, you know, but it can be something real bad. I read that again. Keep them busy in the non-essentials of life and invent innumerable schemes to occupy their minds. He answered. He said, tempt them to spend, spend, and spend. Tempt them to borrow, borrow, and borrow. Persuade the wives to go to work for long hours and the husband to work six to seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day so they can afford their empty lifestyles. Keep them from spending time with their children. They care. Hmm? <laughs> as their family will fragment soon their homes will offer no escape from the pressures of work overstimulate their minds so they cannot hear that still small voice entice them to play the radio or the CD or whatever it is the cassette player 
whenever they drive. Keep the TV, the video, the VCR, the PC going constantly in their home and see to it that every store and restaurant in the world plays non-biblical music constantly. So you can escape it. You go in a taxi, the music deaf you. You go in a bus, you hardly find a gospel one, a gospel playing in these vehicles. Hmm? This will jam their minds and break that union with Christ. You hear what it does? It jam and cloud your mind and break the relationship you seek to have with Christ. Fill the coffee tables with magazines and newspapers. You ever go to a doctor office? Sometimes you search through them, you can hardly find one religious um, material to read. Pound their minds with the news 24 hours a day. And don't we have news in Jamaica? Invade their driving moments with billboards. Flood their mailbox with junk mails. Well, maybe in the States you will find that. Um, catalogs and all of these, they dump in your mailbox. Giving you free products and all of these. Giving you false hope. Sweepstake and all these things in your mailbox. Keep skinny, beautiful models on the magazines and TV. So the husbands, listen now, husbands, wives. So the husbands will believe outward beauty is what's important and they become dissatisfied with their wives. A Satan trick that, you know. Every advertisement on TV have some skimpy, just pretty girls. Huh? And the, cal and the calendars. Yes. All of these are Satan dispatching his angels and demons to play tricks on the minds of God's people. Hmm? So, the skinny and beautiful models will distract the husbands and they become dissatisfied with their wives. Wives, there's something for you too. Keep the wives too tired to love their husbands at night. Give them headache. Give them headaches. If they don't give their husbands the love they need, they will begin to look elsewhere. That will fragment their family quickly. Hmm? Play, not you. That's your tantric. I'm opening it up to you. Give them Santa Claus. Christmas just gone. To distract them from teaching their children the real meaning of Christmas. Give them an Easter bunny so they don't talk about Christ's resurrection and the power of sin and death. You, you notice how these um, holidays become so commercialized that they lose the true meaning. Mm -hmm. Even in their recreation, let them be excessive. Have them return from their recreation exhausted. Keep them too busy to go out in nature and reflect on God's creation. Send them to amusement parks, sporting events, plays, concerts, and movies instead. Keep them busy. Keep them busy. Keep them busy. Then when they meet for spiritual fellowship, involve them in gossip. And small talk. So they live with troubled conscience. And when the preacher is preaching, let them feel exhausted so they sleep.
crowd their lives with so many good causes that they have no time to seek power from Jesus. They want to do things but do it out of self. Yeah? Soon they will be working in their own strength. Sacrificing their health and family for the good of the cause. It will work, Satan says. It will work. It will work. It will work. Pardon my expression of the local vernacular, but it's, it is working. Now, that was quite a plan by Satan, eh? The demons went eagerly to their assignments, causing Christians everywhere to get more busy, more busy, and more rushed, going here and going there, having little time for their God or their families, having no time to tell others about the power of Jesus to change lives. Because they are what? Busy. I guess the question is, has the devil been successful at this scheme? Has the devil been successful at this scheme? I say yes. He has succeeded. But today, you know, I want to let him know that he's a loser. Because there are people here who decide in their heart to make Jesus be first place in their lives. Amen, Amen church? Amen. The acronym BUSY, one person puts it this way, being under Satan's yoke or burdened down with under Satan's yoke. Virgin. Every time Satan sees you make a move to be more on the spiritual side, he doubles his forces to come at you. You know that? Every time he sees you ad advancing spiritually, he launches an attack. And I can tell you one thing. He knows where your weaknesses are. Hmm? He knows where your weaknesses are. In a boxing ring, in a boxing ring, when a boxer opens a wound in his opponent's face, that's where his target is. You watch boxing? Hmm? That's how Satan treats us. When he knows where we are weak, he attacks us there. Satan, when, you, when we look at this, how a writer puts it, Satan knows that if he wants to get into the church, he must get into the family. Hmm? And if he can um, mess up the family, then he knows that he already has inroads into the church. And so, I'm encouraging us. Let us try to build a good family life. Being faithful to each other and being faithful to Christ. What do you say? Amen. Being true to our children. They say children live what they learn. You can say one thing to them and when they see you outside, they see you acting differently. They are no fools. Children aren't fools. We have a responsibility to be good stewards. Amen? We have our opportunity to be good stewards. And so, because Satan is so busy, we have to be careful how we use our time, how we use our talent, how we use what God has blessed us with, how we treat our bodies. The, the, the wise man tells us that there's a time for everything. Hmm? There's a time for everything. Some people don't come to church because they say church, church life boring. They want excitement. And after that, what? You know, this morning I was coming, while we were coming, I passed about three 
funeral trains. And, and when I look at them, I saw bikers, you know, some sort of, when I see them, I just pull, pull away because they don't care. And I, I said to my wife, um, you know, some of these guys, all for them in life is that when they die, they want a funeral like this. Strange thing, eh? The way how they carry on is as if they don't want to live. And when they die, they just want to have a big, a big thing like this. You know? Like, that's the thing. But you know, and when I look at it, I say, oh God. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for them too. Eh? We're not, we're not casting off nobody. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for them too. So let us not be too busy that when we get a chance, we don't try to harness them in. Yeah, let them know that Jesus loved them and that their bodies belong to the Lord. Their time belong to the Lord. Let us do our best to keep our young people together because they are precious to the Lord. So we take time out as we close. We take time out for Jesus because he took time for us. Amen. Give to God what is rightfully his, not just the silver, but let us give to God the best, the gold. Amen. God is waiting to see a demonstration of our faithfulness so he can match it. So he can do what? Match it with his heavenly blessings. Amen. Let this be your prayer today. Lord, Help me to be more faithful to you. Is that going to be your prayer today? Yes. Amen. Lord, help me to be more faithful. I pray that the Lord will help us to be faithful in all things. To be faithful in what? And we will surrender all to Jesus. God bless you as you contemplate on these words. Indeed, we want to thank our elder for those faithful words, uh, encouraging words to us as truads. And as you sat there and you listen, I'm sure that all of you have your takeaway, right? But I just leave you with these few words, uh, which is my takeaway from the message. Do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. We'll stand with the use of him 330 as we bring our divine service to a close. 330. Take my life and let it be. Shall we all stand? Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my hands and let me move at the impulse of thy love. At the impulse of thy love. Take my feet. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice, take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold, not a might would I withhold. Take my will and make it thine.
Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Ever only all for thee. Let the church say amen. 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 God is good. God is good all the time. God is waiting on us to surrender all to him. I want to give somebody a chance. You are here. You have not yet been on the path walking with the Lord. And you want to say, preacher, pray for me that I will find a way and that Jesus Christ will make a difference in my life. Is there such a one? Raise your hand. Let the Lord see that hand as we pray on your behalf. If there's somebody you have not yet given your heart to the Lord and you want to say, preacher, pray for me so that I can make an upward step to Jesus Christ. Is there such a one? Please raise your hand. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. All right, let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks that today you would have spoken to our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that we would have recognized that Satan is real. He is real and he's working. He's not joking. He is serious about what he's doing. And we too, Lord, have to be serious about our soul salvation. I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to watch and be ready. Help us to keep our guards up. Help us to put on the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith. So when the darts of the evil one comes at us, your words will be our shield and defense. I thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit continues to work on our hearts. May we surrender all to you. May we surrender all to you, Lord, holding not back anything, but giving you all. I pray, God, that as we listen and as we meditate on these words, we will purpose in our hearts, Lord, to, to say what the Lord say we will do. Where he sends, we will go. And give us that unction, Lord. Give us the spirit to be co-laborers with you on this mission field. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for what you will be doing for us. Bless every worshiper now, we pray in Jesus' name. Dismiss us, Lord, with blessings we pray. As from thy worship we go our way, guiding life's conflicts all through the day, safe in thy kingdom, thine be the praise. Oh. See you for Bible class and AY later.